bridge, I mean over the bridge, the, the, the cable system that holds it up high up in the air. You get these incredible views of, you can see the, the opera house in the back here, these incredible views. You learn about the architecture of the bridge. It's a great experience. Now the guy who came up with this idea um, was Paul Cave, was, was presented this idea of the city of Sydney. He said, I got this fantastic idea for tourist attractions, really going to put Sydney on the map, and it's a fantastic thing for everyone. And they said, that's really great. Here are 64 reasons why that will never, ever happen. Their, their response was not no, it was absolutely no, under any circumstances. So a lot of people would have been discouraged by that. Paul Cave went back and said, this is fantastic. I now have a 64-point business plan that will get this thing live. And he went back and started working on things one at a time. They said, um, if you put people up there on the bridge, people are going to be distracted by people walking on the bridge, and they're going to crash and die, and we're going to be responsible. He says, I'll put them in coveralls that are the cover of the bridge so that you can't see them. Said, well, people are going to go up there, and stuff's going to fall out of their pockets. He's like, I'll make everyone take everything out of their pockets, run them through a metal detector, and then they've got the coveralls, and everything's tied on so nothing can fall off. And he said, well, somebody's going to go up there and jump off. And so they invented this protection system that you lock into and you can't get out of until it, it, on your own until you finish the walk. The, the guides can in case they need to, but, but you can't. And actually, that became an innovation that's now in use in a number of different um, places in construction and some other entertainment locations. So they innovated and responded to each one of those things one at a time until the thing is working. So this is a case of, you know, again, responding to the constraints with saying, that's fantastic. Now I know exactly what I need to do. So that's the attitude I want you to have in mind as you go through things today and hit those constraints is go, that, that might be a really rich, rich place to go. If we can fix that, if we can get past that, we've really got something. Okay, so our criteria for judging at the end of the day um, is, number one, how much are you on brief, right? And again, we'll get this printed so you have that, this in front of you and we can refer back to it at any point. Um, smart cities for people. So exactly what was in the brief. How much are you on that brief and, and really responding to that? Second one is impact and value. So if we were to get your, your project funded and built, how much impact would it have? Is this something that can change the world? Is it something that can change one local community? Because if it can change one local community, it can change 10 and 100 and 1,000 and change the world. So aim however you want to, but, but think about impact, depth or breadth. Innovation. So again, we've already talked about value. We know innovation is the creation of value creation of new value. So is it new? Is it novel? Have you taken a creative approach to things? And then finally, the UX design quality, which is largely going to be about the quality of thinking. Because a lot of what you're going to be doing today is design thinking, is thinking through the process of design. And the actual outcome you have is going to be, you know, again, rapid, not nearly enough time to do the job that you want to do. But the thinking should be there. What's your, how you walk through that, how you think about it. And then finally, and this one's a little bit, this is more of a, a, a kind of an, an additional percent, and, and the bottom is teamwork. How well does the team come together to deliver? Um, and so we'll, you know, basically that's just to make sure that we don't get a team that says, that, that says well, you know, this guy's been working in, the, in, you know, urban technology for 10 years, so we'll let him do it, and we're going to just play cards. Um, you know, it's, you, you, everyone's involved, and you're, and you're being smart about how you're using the team. Make sense? All good? Okay, so we're going to start getting into focus areas then, going down from transportation to then what you want to work on as a team. Um, and actually, so again, converging, diverging is a constant process throughout the day. One of the things I want you to do is to start out this process by, um, by a, a kind of um, uh, improvisational exercise. So I don't know if anybody recognizes these guys, and it's very dark anyway, but um, if you were an American, you'd probably immediately spot Robin Williams and Jonathan Winters. Um, and this is a scene kind of famous in American television where these guys basically just went completely off script for the entire show um, and, and, uh, and they just impro improvised. And the secret to improvisation, improv imp improvisational comedy or anything like that is the yes and. So it's very tempting when someone says, well, the biggest problem with transportation, build that because that's what we're going to, the exercise we're going to do, you know, the biggest problem with tran transportation is just there are too many cars on the road. And someone says, well, but I mean, everybody needs a car, so how are you going to do it? And then, you're, and then you've lost your, your thread. You're not building on that. So the idea of the yes and, and the exercise I want you to do is one person's going to start out with the biggest problem with transportation is, and the next person's going to say yes and, and add something else to it. And just trip up that reflex you have to either expand on the idea that they had and, and say, hey, that's really interesting. You know how we could solve that? 
or actually I don't think so. I think it's more this. You just say yes and and then add your idea. And by doing this, we do a couple things. One, I get you in a mode of that that yes and mode of you're just building and adding and 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 ideating, but it also um, puts a bunch of ideas out there very quickly and gets you in the mindset of transportation, what the problems are. Okay, now for this exercise to work, we really do need to start getting into the teams that we're going to be in to some extent. And again, there's still one last shot to move around if we want to, but like I, I'm seeing, a, you know, two, a three, a three. Are, are you guys waiting for people you know are going to show up or should we combine some of these so that we have, because um, I think we've got Good group here. We've got four here, but um, but you guys all know each other. You're, you're part of, you're part of it. you're with the teams, right? I, I don't even know who the who are the official teams and who aren't. We'll work that stuff out later. Nitesh knows. Um, you guys are okay. You're you're okay. Yeah, you're okay. But I think it's probably just these three tables here. Can we do some combining among these three? And then actually, yeah, even these, and then actually this, this, this kind of whole section here, because we've got another three here, maybe you guys can come forward. This is a good group here. As long as we got about four or five in a group, I think we're good. Huh? Should not have more than five, unless it's, a, unless it's an existing team. Okay, so, so just so I'm clear, this is, so um, the, the teams are here, wait, where, which one, the finalist teams? Just because, okay, great, this one, this one. Okay. Okay. Okay, great, and now we've got, so that's, we're not too bad. Um, three here, but you know what, you guys okay being three? Okay, all right, so you're going to get to go multiple, or, or, oh great, fantastic, you're four now. Okay, <clears throat> so this first exercise, I'm, I'm just going to kick you off and start, just, just you know, pick the first person in the group, and you're, and you're going to go around as many times as we go around before I, before I say stop. So it's just as simple as, you know, the problem with transportation is too many cars on the road. Yes, and um, uh, uh, there also, we have breakdowns that lead to traffic jams, yes, and then the ambulances can't get through because the traffic is blocked up, yes, and, and just keep going, okay? So, off you go. You know, not nearly started and really just as kind of a warm up and just to get what's top of mind, just to get some initial thoughts out. So one of the things that we're gonna we're gonna start we're gonna do in this exercise is get your kind of core problem that you're gonna focus on. And I want to talk about how many of you are familiar with the how might we question? Okay. How might we this is a phrase the phrase that I think was um, came out of IDEO. Um, and, and the idea is, is that, that by phrasing questions in this way, 
it kind of launches, linguistically sort of launches you on the right path to think about solutions. So it's really easy to think about things like, to put things in these kind of terms, right? We say, you know, can we make the commute faster? Um, you know, what would make people use public transport? Uh, what if drivers were more pleasant? And the problem with those statements is they can, they can leave you a little bit frozen. So the idea of the how might we is that how might we, each of those things has a, has a purpose. So how might we make the commute faster? Again, it's like it puts you on the search for a solution. It's not just can this be done? Well, maybe it can, maybe it can't. I don't know, I'm done. Um, but it's actually how could we do that? What's, it opens things up. How might we encourage the use of, of public transportation? So again, it, cre it creates the sense of possibility. Um, you know, not, not just, you know, it, there's something out there that would do this, but how might we be, be able to do that, opening up the, the possibility? And of course, the we, really important, instead of, you know, what if drivers are more pleasant? Well, it's a shame they're not. People are just that way. How might we encourage drivers to be more, more pleasant? So by sticking that phrase on the, beginning of your, on the uh, beginning of your problem, you can really start to shape it into something that you have some ability to solve. And so it's, it's a nice little tool to use, really simple. Um, and you'll find that you, once you start using this, it becomes a very natural way to, to talk about problems. So what I want you to do now um, is you've, you've just been doing some of this, but you can capture some of the ideas that came out of that yes and session, but just start writing down some how might we um, questions. Um, and actually, ideally, if we've got the post-it notes coming around, we can start doing these on post-its. Otherwise, if you've got paper in front of you, um, we can do it on those. Um, and, uh, and so what you want to do is just, at this point, generate as many um, how might we questions as you can. Um, and then we're going to go to a next step of selecting and focusing. But right now, just generate as many how might we questions as you can. 49. By the way, something I noticed, I just want to say in general, sorry, but still, still go in here. So in, in general, when you're doing these kind of exercises, one trick for making them really go faster is if everybody takes responsibility for capturing their own thoughts and you write while you talk. Um, so if you say, if you're, if you're saying, um, uh, yeah, you know, how might we uh, make it easier for emergency vehicles to uh, get through traffic? That's one of the, you know, that's one of the problems that I want to focus on. And you're writing it, you're saying it, and everyone's, you're, you're, you're having the discussion and you're capturing it at the same time. Um, things can go really, really fast that way. Because for all the exercises we're doing while we're doing that, it can be really useful to have that. So that's, um, that's one thought. But okay, so now what we're going to do is really focus in on, on one, that you, one that you really want to spend your day working on. Okay, out of the ones that you've got there now, which one do you want to focus on? So I'll leave you to that for a few minutes. time on this one. Whatever you've got is what you're working with. Okay. 
So what I, what I want to do now is just quickly go around and give me your give me your one your one liner of what you're working on because I just want to get a sense of where people are focusing on in the room. Um, so I don't know. Do we have another mic or is this the only one we've got? On the road. Okay. So their focus is on the number of vehicles on the road. Great, good one. Who, who else wants? Our focus is going to be on how might we distribute the traffic. Okay, distribute the traffic. Distribute the traffic across the road. Keep from, keep the pinch points from from occurring. Okay, In, nice, interesting. Okay. Sorry, sorry. How do you make transportation smarter? Make trans. Okay, tell me what you mean by that. That still sounds really broad. Yeah, it is broad. So um, we we wrote on all of these uh, problems, and then we thought that um, if we if we if we use the data and make the information available for you know the end user or the, you know the citizen, we'll cover all of these. So you know we want to come up with an app that will suit everyone. I know we may be more. So it, so it's kind of making the driver smarter. Is that the idea? Use of existing data, the use of existing information available to make uh, transportation easy. Yeah. So use okay. the intelligence and, uh, uh, and make it more accessible. Okay. So, okay, making the intelligence more accessible. You're on to something, but I think you're going to ha that'll have to tighten up a little bit, but that's okay. We've got time to do that. Okay. So we Guys, can we, I know you're, you're, you're all eager to be working on stuff. Yeah, there you go. Nice job. Uh, <laughs> But let's let's keep focus on on the on everyone. So the idea is to hear the other problems. It'll give you a sense of of the problem statement. So we're trying to address uh, declogging the roads to make uh, uh, it, the transport system more effective. Number of vehicles and pollution. Okay. So focus right in on on public transport and and the outcomes around uh, pollution and and uh, number of cars. Okay. How might we go green by efficient resource management? Okay, say so efficient resource management. Tell me what you mean. It could like the carpooling, for example, right? But okay. trusting each other, and how can we enable that kind of trust? Uh, okay, so things like car. So you know, carpooling might it might be a direction you want to go to really focus in on just that problem. But something like that. Okay, good. Okay. Who's so how might we build a safe, intuitive transportation for people and environment? Safe initiative. So that's still really broad. Like that's almost a restatement of the brief. We have brainstorming the first Safety. Right. So so just a Okay, so I think you guys have a lot of ideas here. I think it, it, you're still in the selection process. Okay, that's okay. That's all right. That's you need to. I think you need to narrow down to something something tighter. But again, there'll be a little room to do that. But okay, uh, next one. Yeah. So ours is uh, how do we address medical emergencies due to traffic congestion? Okay, so focus on on medical emergencies. Okay, there's some. some Make way for the ambulance. I mean, there's some interesting things you could do around that. Yeah. Uh, in India, what we have, the, we have fixed time stoppage for uh, red lights in peak cars or normal timing. Right. So we are uh, taking that problem, how to fix that uh, issue in the peak car and okay. the prediction of the traffic. Okay, so kind of dynamic traffic management, predictive and managing the traffic lights. Okay, interesting one. Okay, have I hit everybody? Oh, these guys, okay. Uh, it's like how might we be able to empower people and government to make more informed decisions while leveraging existing resources and technology to improve the current experiences, road okay. experience. Okay, so that one again sounds, sounds like a more elaborate restatement of the brief. I'd still be fo focusing in on something specific, yeah? Okay. Okay, but you're, but what you're focusing on is the personal experience of of the people who are get. Okay, I, I would I would put that down. I think that's I think I think that gets lost in that statement, but maybe it's how might we make the personal experience of transportation better? Something something as simple as that. Okay, so there were a couple of groups where I said you still have a. Okay. 
and we're back. Look, there are people with their hands up. I wonder what that means. Okay, great. Um, okay, so um, so those are good. So there, so there are a couple of people. There are a couple of groups where I said it's still a little bit soft. There's something. There's a phrase I really like from the Helsinki Design School. They say good problems should be brittle. And I picture peanut brittle, which is an American snack that you make. You kind of cook sugar together with peanuts, and it turns really hard and crunchy. I'm, I know there's some Indian snacks that are like that. And if you don't cook it right, they're kind of bendy and mushy. But if you get it just right, it snaps. That's what your problem should feel like. It should have that kind of sense of I can immediately think of how I break this down, and, and, and it has that kind of snap to it. So you know, there are a few people who, who, who were in you know, a few groups who weren't quite there yet, but I think you're, you know, you've got the, I, I can see what ideas are on your table. You've got some things to work with. You'll get there. Um, but that's a good start. Okay. And actually, this next exercise will probably help you start to frame things up a little bit. So what we're going to do now is this, is this first stage. Now that you've got the thing that you're working on in, as, a, as a group, everybody happy with what they're working on? Reasonably happy, yeah? OK, good. Um, so so we, we, I, I showed you this video yesterday. We already talked about finding the problem. The other thing I want to show you that's in, in, you know, this is one of these great internet quotes that you know, probably Einstein never said, but it's still a really nice idea, um, which is, if I had an hour to solve a problem, I'd spend the first 55 minutes on defining the question because then I could probably solve the problem in five minutes. So again, we're back to that same idea that Kevin Systrom had yesterday of really defining that. So that's why we're spending a lot of time swimming around in the problem. You, you know, our, our instinct as designers is to start designing, and that's absolutely the right instinct. And I would say use those tools even while you're thinking about the problem. But one of the things we want to do is, is, is you know, again, really immerse ourselves in the situation because, again, that's where, where opportunities come from. And we'll use this through the ideation and the, and the closure. So, so what I want you to do now is, is what I call context mapping because it's a little bit different from experience mapping. And you can do this graphically, but I thought with this group and the space we have, it might be easier to do this um, just with, with some words. So what I want you to do is, is put these categories. We should have another sheet of flip chart paper. Um, that we can give you. You've got a couple there. Okay. So put these categories on, on, on paper. And what we're going to do is, first thing is, in the context of your problem, what are the jobs to be done for the application you're building? What would I hire this application to do? It's a really nice, again, really nice framework for thinking about what, it, what an application